Hi, this is Nick Karaz of Clips and Handles here to bring you a very exciting tutorial on working with BCC Lite in Avid Media Composer. And the best part about BCC Lite is that it's absolutely free with your media composer subscription. Simply head over to avid.com where you have your media composer Poser subscription account and right underneath you can download both BCC Lite for both Windows and Mac. Once you've installed that onto your system, we can see under the effect palette the various categories for BCC Lite. So there's three effects in one transition. If we take a look at BCC Color and Tone, we have a BCC Colorize Green Dot effect and a BCC Colorize MT or Blue Dot effect. MT really stands for Motion Tracker, which is a built-in custom design motion tracker that you can use with this effect to automatically, let's say, position lights or even locking a mask to a target. Now, one of the limitations of including a motion tracker is that the effect can't be real time or green dot. So to help with this, the BCC light package includes a second version of these filters from which the motion tracker has been stripped away. These green dot effects can basically offer unrendered real time previews to get you up and running right away. Let's take a look at the BCC lights category. We have the lens flare 3D, as well as the lens flare 3D MT effects, the scan line effect under the stylized category, and the swish pan transition under the BCC transitions category. Now let's go to BCC stylize and apply the scan line effect to this basketball clip that I've desaturated in my timeline. I'm gonna select the effect, alter option, drag it to nest it onto the clip. I'll go into my effects editor, and right away I see a series of on-screen controls in my record monitor. I can increase the size of the scan lines, add some softness, as well as change the speed into a forward or reverse direction with a negative number. If I hit the space bar, I can see that effect. I can adjust those parameters, or head over to the effect editor to adjust them there, as well as several other. If I'm unfamiliar with how this effect works, what I can do at the top of the effect is launch the effects browser. Once I click the button, the effects browser opens. If I hit the space bar, I can preview my clip and cycle through a series of presets that I can apply onto my footage. Once I find an effect or preset that I like, I can select that and hit the apply button. The effect is now applied onto the clip can simply play it back and watch it. Let's move over to the next clip in the timeline and apply the BCC Lens Flare 3D effect. I want to go to the BCC Lights category and apply the BCC Lens Flare 3D green dot effect. Once I load the effect editor, I got another series of on-screen controls just to move the position of where my lens flare is located. I can adjust in the effect editor controls such as the global intensity of the lens flare to increase its brightness or increase the scale depending on where I'm adding the lens flare. If I go into the effects browser, I'll see several presets for this particular lens flare effect and I can cycle through them again using those arrow keys. Once I find one that I like, I can simply select it and apply it onto the clip. If there are certain components of the lens flare that I dislike, I can scroll down the effect, such as in this case, I'm going to turn off the polygons for the lens flare effect. If I scroll up, there are some options to automatically animate this lens flare, such as in the light flicker section. If I increase the speed as well as the amount and then hit the space bar to play back, we can see some flicker start in the lens flare. Now let's say that you want to have the lens flare become affected by the music that's play, uh, taking place in the background. Let me scroll up and go back to the effects browser. And I'm going to choose another lens flare preset to work with for this particular case. I'll head down to the bottom of the effect and enable something called Beat Reactor. Beat Reactor allows me to load an external file or external .AIF file, and this happens to be the music that's already in my timeline. Once I choose open, what I'm going to see is the waveform that I've selected from outside my system. In the effect editor, what I can choose is choose a parameter that I want to be affected by the music. So I want to have the 
global intensity become affected by the music. We can already see a pop in brightness in the lens flare. Now I'm going to choose to sample a only a portion of this graph. So I'm going to use my sample corner points to sample exactly which part of the graph I want to become affected. Once I do, I can play back and see its effect on the lens flare. If I want the effect to be more aggressive, I can look under audio apply options for the A parameter that's affected and increase the max output. In order to turn off the graph, I simply just have to go into the beat reactor options and just simply choose to not show the graph. Let's move to the last clip in the timeline. And from the BCC color and tone category, apply the green dot BCC colorize effect to the clip. Right away, we get a nice little tint on our footage. If I bring up the effect editor, we can go into the effects browser and choose from a series of presets. I'm really liking this icy blue gray effects, which I'm simply gonna to apply to the clip. The great part about the colorize effect is if I scroll down, there's an area here in BCC Lite called Pixel Chooser. I'm gonna to choose to turn this on so that I minimize the tint effect only to a portion of the screen. What I'm gonna choose is to use a PC region. I'm gonna to choose to have this effect on the outside of an oval shape. Once I choose that, on-screen controls show up for the oval shape, which I can change and make a lot bigger. And here you can see I can get somewhat of a vignette effect. If I wanted to change the feathering that takes place on the edges of my shape, I can affect the region blend. If I didn't want to affect this using a shape, let me just choose to deselect that option. I can go down to my PC mat options and choose a particular channel. Let's minimize this effect just to the red channel. I can then choose to increase or decrease the threshold, add a blur to that color mat, and choke that mat to affect less or more pixels. Now this effect goes even further if you choose to purchase the full BCC10 plugin package. So not only do you get these three effects, but you get hundreds of effects, and several of these effects are then gonna be powered by Mocha's tracking technology. Let's take a look at what this has to offer. The first thing you should notice about BCC10 is the several additional effects you have. In fact, you have hundreds available to you directly in Avid Media Composer, allowing you to take care of all of your compositing tasks within the editor and not having to go into any other editing application. This is extending even further by having access in many of these effects to go into Mocha and do all of your tracking or planner-based tracking there. So here you can see all the different categories that are available for BCC 10. I want to head over to one of my favorite effects, which is the BCC remover effect and apply it to this clip. I want to go into the effect editor. And the first thing I want to do is just decide on the destination that I want to clone out, which happens to be this spot right here and the source that I want to clone from. The shot is moving, so this method won't be effective this time around. So I'm gonna to choose to use a clone shape. The minute I choose that, I'm able to access Pixel Chooser, which we saw in the BCC Colorize effect. But with BCC 10, I can turn Mocha on and launch it directly from the effect without having to leave Avid Media Composer. When I get inside of it, all I have to do is define an area to which I want to track. So I'll grab my X-Spline and simply click and drag around the shape in order to define it. I will click on one of these points and hit Command A and then select these edges just to make a little bit more of a smoother curve. Checking down here, I can see all the various tracking options that are available to me and which which motion I can track. Selecting the default settings, I'll hit to track this forward. It seems to be holding up pretty well. And once the track is complete, I can close down Mocha, save this, and head right back into Avid Media Composer. Now, the shot is looking pretty good. However, what I'm going to do is just simply play with the offset of the effect to decide which area I want to clone in the shot. So I might choose to move my playhead since this is a moving shot to see how it holds up throughout. And as you can see, it holds up nicely. In the effect editor, I'm gonna to go to the pixel chooser mask and play with the feather to feather out those edges. And within a couple 
of minutes, I'm able to remove something from a shot using BCC 10 and Mocha directly inside of Avid Media Composer and not stepping out to another application. So whether you're using BCC Lite, which you can download for free off avid.com or upgrading to BCC 10, you have a world of options to finish all of your compositing tasks inside of Avid Media Composer. I'm Nick Carraz of Clips and Handles. Thanks for watching and check out Boris's site for more tutorials on getting up and running with BCC Lite and BCC 10.